What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris and Nightingale's Update 0.2 has officially launched as of today. It's the first medium sized update we'll see along the way here, but for a medium sized update this is actually pretty huge. From a massive amount of community requests, new missions, new weapons, and a ton more, this update is looking incredibly well rounded and I'm really excited to get to it when my game's done updating here. So let's dive into these patch notes for 0.2 and stay tuned as we dig further into this update with a ton of videos over the next few days going over everything from the new missions to magic changes. But first things first, let's look at all the changes that are in update 0.2. So the patch notes read, This is our first update to focus on several quality of life crafting features, gameplay, and attribute changes. We've streamlined many aspects of gameplay, particularly our crafting system, by making key refinements, adding quality of life features, adjusting limitations, and consolidating several characteristics. These updates to crafting are further bolstered by brand new weapons, enemies, and combat mechanics. For a breakdown of our most significant changes and answers, to some common community questions, check out the latest developer update video below, and we'll have that one linked in the description below. So for the 0.2 change log, the highlights are queued crafting, crafting from storage, UI improvements, three new weapons were added and various existing weapons and tools were changed, universal dodging was added, two new bound types and changes to existing lantern head and bombardier bounds have happened, new NPCs as well as updated and new quests. There are performance improvements, there's adjustments to resource, clothing, and weapon attributes. Now any attribute can be added to any item in crafting. And lastly, the ability to purchase Essence Trader wares from the guidebook after discovering them. Firstly, getting into the patch notes proper here with some game changes. In the art and visual department, there's been general animation improvements to creatures, player characters, weapons, and tools, as well as updated art for tomatoes, carrots, wheat, oats, onions, and potatoes. Nice. For audio and sound effects, Nellie Bly is now a fully voiced character. The pain emote sound effect has been tweaked, and they adjusted combat music triggers to increase responsiveness. Then for building, they tweaked building costs to make erecting large structures cheaper. I'm 12, why am I laughing? Erecting large structures cheaper and therefore quicker to construct. Then for combat, new weapons have been added to the early game. The Blunderbuss, a two-handed shotgun that deals ranged area damage. A sheath of throwing knives, which is a ranged projectile weapon that can be held in your offhand alongside other one-handed weapons. And lastly, the Grenade Satchel, an explosive projectile that can be used in your offhand alongside other weapons. Then, a universal dodge was added. This has made some changes to default keybinds. Control is now dodge, C is crouch, and V is crafting menu, and these can be changed in the settings. A new boomerang special attack for, for sickles, a new parry special attack for, hunt, for the hunting knife, and then a new flurry special attack for hammers. We then have some crafting changes. They added crafting from storage, which uh, building from storage will come in a later update. I'm looking forward to that. And then they also added a crafting queue to all crafting stations. Crafting weapons and tools with unique resources, resources with attributes attached, will now mean that the weapon or tool will inherit those attributes. So say you're building a sickle and it doesn't have any stealth on it, you can now apply stealth to that sickle. For enemies, new bound have been added to the realms, the Aegis, a large bound that carries two shields, and the Mortar, a slow-moving unit carrying the burden of its weapon on its back. Bound Grenadier grenades are now explosive and no longer generate miasma. Additionally, their grenades now have a short fuse instead of exploding immediately on impact. Bound Lantern heads now hang back and fire ranged attacks at realm walkers. Low-level bound wearing masks or helmets now will do more damage. Bound minions overall have had their health reduced, and creature taunts now cancel if the creature is hit. For NPCs and quests, basic NPC companion commands have been added. Players can now toggle whether they want their companions to do things such as fight, heal, harvest, and more. Most importantly, you can stop them from burning your precious wood. 
Keep in mind that you'll still have to manually equip the correct tools and give them the correct permissions, such as allowing them to access your chests, for their respective behaviors to function. They also don't need to be your current companion to exhibit these behaviors. We'll be continuing to improve and expand survivor behaviors in the future, and that's something I'm very looking forward to. There are also new quest NPCs that can be found in the realms of uh, Veronica. Ver I'm not gonna say this right. Veronica Albertine Bianacci <laughs> and Desma Valavani, and uh, the two of them can be found in the Antiquarian realms. I believe Albertine is in the uh, desert, and Valavani is in the forest. But uh, either way, it's in the Antiquarian realms. Aurelio's quests have had minor changes to flow and rewards. Players who have already started the quest line will continue to progress through the previous version. Players who completed Nelly's gateway to the watch quest through the aggressive path are now able to go back and finish Frankenstein's, Ludovine's, and Danu's quest lines with new dialogue. Bound Dark Weavers have been reworked. Players will need to clear Tethered Bound before attacking the Master. Bound casters now flow closer to the ground and their teleport move has been tweaked and refined. Various combat improvements for bound elite minions and bound minions. And then also they re-enabled creature fall damage, which I'm curious about that one. For resources, they added a reclamation option for alloys. Coal and sulfur now have a non-zero weight, which I'm very interested to see how much those weigh. Then they adjusted and consolidated various attributes for resources. They removed certain attributes and consolidated a few here. So for blocking efficiency, it's been consolidated to injury resistance. Stamina efficiency has been removed. Uh, heat, cold. Uh, blight and wet resistance have all been consolidated to environmental resistance. Strength and fishing and range have also all been removed. The removed attributes such as strength and fishing will now become part of the identity of certain items as opposed to being a raw stat. For the user interface and user experience, there's been an overall UI optimization. Broad aesthetic and functional improvements across all aspects of the UI for better clarity and usability. There's been new throwing knives, uh, HUD action icons. Uh, there's a new special attack HUD icon for uh, climbing picks, the hammer, the sickle, and the hunting knife. They updated and added various resources, tools, weapons, and decoration icons, replacing the old wax end, which it's a bit of a shame to see it go, but it had to happen at some point. And then they added more help on stock menu options for players, including closest respawn point and nearby the current spot. And then a bunch of miscellaneous stuff here from the update. Performance improvements across the realms, particularly in areas with high creature and enemy density, players should see better performance on their machines as well as the servers. They've also added an ultra performance preset, which is great to see. We've increased the number of points of interest found in the realms with over a dozen activities, infestation, bastille of intellect, etc., found at new locations. Which, that's cool because that means that maps are going to feel a little bit more filled out and have more options and opportunities to engage with them. They've added a travel to respite option when loading into the game from the main menu. Players can now rename their pet beds. So technically speaking, you can name your pets, kinda. <laughs> uh, they lowered the cooldown for Carnute tree revival near estate cairns. And then the Carnute should now only revive tree stumps and not other resources or bustables. Players will no longer die when they fall through the map. Instead, they'll be teleported to their respawn point and players are now able to purchase recipes, blueprints, and resources directly from the guidebook after they've met the relevant essence trader in the realms. And then a couple changes from 0.13, umbrellas have been rebalanced for extended and faster gliding, and swimming and rock climbing have had their stamina requirements significantly reduced.
Now, there are a ton of bug fixes and little bits of polishing that have uh, gone on here for 0.2, so we're going to read through this pretty quickly. Uh, for progression blockers, a server-side fix applied to remove redundant data and reduce player file size to prevent players from being unable to resume characters, resulting in continuous dratted errors. They fixed various client crashes, and then they fixed various server crashes and hangs that would lead to DCs. Uh, for art and visual, they fixed an issue where composite structures turned invisible after traveling to a respite realm. And then they fixed various pieces of clothing from clipping through other items. And lastly, they fixed various environmental art bugs. For audio and sound effects, they fixed the dry fire sound effect for various guns. For building, campfires no longer have negative traits applied when placed on the ground, which that's cool. That means that you can place a campfire wherever you want. Uh, the makeshift torch recipe has been changed to give one torch instead of three, and some fixes to standalone structure numbers in the building UI displaying incorrectly. So that's the augment bug, and that's great to see fixed. Uh, economy, all merchants now sell required crafting ingredients for, buildings, for the building schematics that they sell. NPCs in the watch will no longer occasionally spawn facing odd angles. Players can now remove Sass's quest from their quest log by refusing to tell her what they've found out. Frankenstein's quest, How Automatons Tick, will now accept Tier 1 and above resources. They fixed an issue where followers would disappear through portals, which that's great to see. And then they fixed one of the climbing picks getting stuck floating in mid-air when equipping to an NPC. Then for the player character, the modeled skin character creation option is now functional. If modeled skin becomes intense and swollen, consult Dr. Frankenstein for treatment. This is not an actual gameplay feature, I kind of figured. <laughs> and then for resources, they fixed issues where etched ingots cannot be added to blueprints. They fixed a bug where animal fiber could not be refined into refined fiber, which that's awesome. And then they adjusted refinement time for various items. Then for the user interface and the user experience, they corrected issues where text overran UI boxes. They fixed an issue where players leaving voice chats they left a, a user interface artifact. Uh, they fixed several text issues and they fixed an issue where equipped items were transferred to storage when hitting the equivalent button. Then for realm cards, the Settler Eminent Realm card now negatively affects plant growth rate in the affected realm, which means plants will grow faster. Okay. Uh, and then the Settler Eminent card description has been edited. That, that one makes me scratch my head a bit. We'll have to test that out. Uh, and then for the miscellaneous stuff, uh, estate cards placed in non-abeyance realms will no longer appear on the map as respite points. They fixed an issue with rain not properly watering plants. Uh, they fixed, uh, they made a fix for resources spawning at your feet when you destroy something with a ranged weapon. They now spawn at the location of the destroyed object. They fixed an issue where escape or the B button no longer exited storage or crafting menus. Uh, for achievements missed because they completed too quickly on the start, uh, for example, welcome home or a safe haven should now function correctly. Also, missing achievements for completed challenges should now be granted when the player next enters a realm. The Automaton Rook will no longer harvest resources in the distance when attacking a player or being hit reacted. And lastly, a fix for enemies sometimes spawning outside of the forest vault's interior. Thank you for your patience and for joining us on this journey. So huge right there's so much for us to get into so stay tuned for my first impressions coming soon here but for now let me know what you're most excited for in the update in the comments below is it the big stuff like the crafting changes or maybe the new weapons or enemies or maybe even something small but important like npc behavior changes let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below and for now thank you for watching and i will catch you all in the next one until then peace